Hey guys, we're going to work on some different types of data and graphically representing it. Um, so we're going to look at the exercises on the front and the back of the front page. So for like this first exercise, it talks about a dot plot. And dot plots basically just display the each the amount of values they have for each number. So like for question A, where it says how many of the workers are 18 years old, well you just look over at the at 18 which would be this number right here and you count the dots in that column so like in this case that would be four um, range we haven't talked about when we're talking about range it's gonna be the maximum number you see minus the minimum number you see so like the maximum number will be the highest dot which is 42 and then you'd subtract that from the lowest dot which in this case would be those two which are 16 so this ended up being 26. Now for part C, it says, is it a symmetric distribution? Now, symmetric would mean that it kind of falls equal on each side. So like in this case, if you're looking at all the dots, um, there is more dots on the left here this area than there are on the right. So we're not going to consider this symmetric. And then the last question asks for the average age of workers is 22 years. And does that represent the typical worker? And in this case, 22 would be this value right here. But a majority of the numbers are less than that. So this is not representative which in this case, maybe another value like the median would be representative of the data. So those are some things you want to think about when you're dealing with different graphs, because they always ask you questions about them. Now we're going to move on to the next example, okay? And with two, you're just going to kind of fill in the dot plot yourself. So I'd recommend as you do this, Look for the lowest numbers, look for any ones at zero. We don't have anyone at zero. So like if you look at one, put a little check underneath the one and then fill in a dot above it and then work your way through that example. So this would be a good time to pause the video and do exercise two then come back when you're finished. Now we'll move on to exercise three. And exercise three talks about a histogram. So we're gonna use the graph here to help us answer these questions. So in this case, how many workers have ages between 19 to 21? Well, you want to look at the 19 to 21 column. And in this case, it's between 10 and 12, which would be 11. Now, they ask for a disadvantage. What makes this histogram not as good as a dot plot? And if you look at that 19 to 21, I mean, you don't know the number, the exact number for each age in this case. So maybe there's 10 people at 19, maybe there's 8 people at 19, we just don't know. On for C, it talks about is there any advantage of this? Well in the case of, I think of neatness, um, also this is more uniform, okay? You could have a greater, this allows you to use categories more effectively. Okay, this will work with a bigger set of data. Because if you have a dot plot and you have hundreds, um, in that case, you have to put every dot down, okay? And then the last part I want to look at, and we'll start, and then I'll have you finish it yourself, is exercise four. Exercise four gives us a frequency table and a histogram, kind of like the dot plot. You want to go through and find any values that are between 40 to 49, okay? Don't cross them out, just put like a check or an X underneath them. So go from left to right. In this case, right now we have, in the tally column, there's three. And then for the frequency, you'd write that number in. Now, some of the things that you'll notice 
as you work on the histogram, you want to make sure, based on the number of categories, you have equal spaces on the bottom. So it looks like for this one, you know, maybe starting at 40 to 49, maybe using three spaces, we should be able to fit all the data in. And then if we keep going from there, we want these bars to be the same size. So if you want to do a little guess and check and make sure that it'll fit. So like in this case, as I go through, I notice I'm only going to fit five columns. So if that doesn't work, well, then you erase it. And maybe you shrink it down to two for each one. So like in this case, I'm going to write it sideways so I can fit it all. And then what I would do is, you know, maybe I count up by ones. So like this would be one, two, three, four, five. And I know this bar is going to be at three. So I would fill that bar in. Maybe put a little design in it. And then you want to go from there. So after you finish the histogram, make sure that you have uh, one of the teachers in the room check it for you.